For those of us who know the Isle of Man, its map is a very familiar shape to us. We'd recognise it anywhere. But how do we come by that shape? How do you draw something that you can't actually see all in one go? If you had to map the Isle of Man, how would you do it? Well, you could walk around the island and draw, in miniature, the outline of the coast. And eventually, when you got back to where you started, you'd have a map of the Isle of Man. The fact is, though, it probably wouldn't be very accurate. When the magnetic compass appeared in the 12th century, it certainly improved the accuracy of mapping. You did at least know which direction you were facing when you went round the coast and could draw it accordingly. Even so, there were some very bizarre attempts at getting the shape of the island right, even as late as the 18th century. This map was published in 1610, and although England and Wales are depicted accurately, the Isle of Man is far too large, and not at all the right shape. It was the maps of the Isle of Man, published by John Speed in the early 17th century, which provided the most accurate early representations of the island. Although the shape was longer and thinner than we're familiar with today, it is very definitely recognisable as the Isle of Man. This shape was copied by other map makers, and you can see Speed's influence in their various efforts. Of course, with the gradual introduction of more sophisticated survey techniques, mapping has become more and more accurate. But in recent years there has been a complete change in the way that maps are prepared, and these early map makers with their compasses and theodolites could only dream of how we do it today. Hey, Rob, nice to meet you. Hi, Alex, nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming. The Isle of Man is responsible for preparing its own maps, and the detail they contain is quite remarkable. And to find out how this is done, I come to meet Rob Kleins, senior cartographer at the Department of Infrastructure. So, Rob, how is mapping of the Isle of Man done nowadays? Okay, well, modern modern day mapping uh, techniques involve aerial photography. Unlike in the old days when we used to use um, ground surveyors, which would involve going out and taking readings, measurements, etc. We now just put together a flying programme. We have a camera strapped underneath an aeroplane, and as you'll see on screen there, we go and capture um, vertical, what's called vertical aerial photography, which essentially means pointing straight downwards. The image you're looking at on screen is an area around the uh, Ronalds Way Airport and Castletown that we took a few weeks ago. It's not actually one photograph, that's actually a number of images sewn together electronically, which gives us a sort of a, a geographically corrected model which then we can we can overlay the mapping on. So when you say take photographs of the island the whole island is basically made up um, of separate photographs that you've um, laid out as a flight plan? Yeah that's it exactly. If you look at the, the, uh, the map on the index chart up there the dark pink areas are the areas that we're going to fly this year. They're the areas where there's most change going on and, and where, where we think that we need to update the mapping. So how do you produce the maps of the roads and so on from these photographs? Once, once the photography has been, been captured and, and then corrected, we can then overlay the mapping on top of the image. And from that, we simply go around, it's almost like tracing. We go around and we can, we can capture all the, the buildings and the road edges, um, walls, and the, all, all, all sorts of physical features. I shall zoom in on an area here, which is the Janet's Corner development down in Castletown. You'll see the new buildings um, taking shape, uh, the new roadways being built. Uh, we're still in progress, but from that, we can actually create a whole new layer of mapping. If I switch on the mapping layer now, you'll see it drops in on top of the photography. So we've started to capture the buildings and the roads. Uh, we'll have to go back probably next year and, and take all the driveways and the, and the, and the fences, etc. But the principle is actually very, very simple. And I believe there's lots of other information that you can overlay on top of that as well. Yes, I mean, mapping, mapping is, is the sort of the groundwork, but now everything's electronic. You've got the layers of what you call geographic information which could be cabling, it could be um, registered trees, planning information, um, all sorts of utility uh, data, which has all been captured electronically, which you can then drop on, on top of mapping. Now, as we're doing a programme about coastal erosion, would you be able to show us a modern photograph of Carlin Mill and then overlay the Ordnance Survey map of the island in the 1860s? Of course, that's no problem. Ah, so you can see the current coastline on the photograph and where the coastline was. And with some digital wizardry, we could put the coast back to where it was 150 years ago. 
And what about the point of air? Because there have been some dramatic changes there as well. This is the point of air as it is today. And if we lay the 1866 survey on top, you can see how the tip of the point has moved in the last 150 years. If you were to continue back even further to when the point of air lighthouse was built in 1818, the point might have been even further round. So you can see it's moved a long way in the last 200 years to where it is today. Look again at John Speed's map of 1610. Nowadays, we think the way he has shown the point of air is wildly inaccurate, far too pointed. But in fact, if we were to factor in erosion around the northern coasts over the last 400 years, and the way we know the point of air has been moving, then maybe Speed was recording shapes that have long since disappeared. What we do know is that today's maps are amazingly accurate, and in 400 years' time, people can use these maps with confidence to compare any future changes. Rob, thank you very much.